So Lou Dobbs was fired. He was fired by Fox for pushing conspiracies around the election. And um, the backstory is, is interesting. We've seen this already with Newsmax and One America News Network. You know, I think it was Dominion, that voting machine company, was like, we're suing you over a billion dollars because this is libel, slander, defamation. We're believers in free speech, but this even violates our very lax free speech laws. And so they all backpedaled. All of the networks that got that phone call backpedaled. Why? Because they don't have a leg to stand on. They really are making demonstrably false claims. Um, and it's, it's, it's clear. I mean, some of the conspiracies are just beyond absurd. There was like, the main one is that there's some sort of international communist plot and Dominion rigged the voting machines and they're doing the bidding of the Venezuelan government and they've worked with the Venezuelan government in the past. So really, this is all an international communist plot and, and they went for Biden. I mean, just, I'm, grow the fuck up, man. This is, we're in Cookiesville. There's no evidence for any of this, of course. And so that's why the lawsuits are coming, because even with our incredibly lax, rightly so, free speech laws, defamation is defamation, dog. And so that's why when they got in talks with these networks, One American News Network is the one, is it Newsmax? One American News Network. I don't remember. Well, one of them pretty much immediately was like, okay, okay, we'll read on air the apology. It's like when Alex Jones had to do the apology for Sandy Hook. Because his people were harassing some of the parents of the kids that died. And so he didn't, he was going to get sued into non existence. And he went out there and he had to read a statement. So this is similar to that, right? But one of the big boys on Fox was pushing the election conspiracies and not backing down. I mean, Lou Dobbs, one of the biggest sick of Trump sick fans on the planet. Remember that segment where he's like, have a good weekend. Our wonderful president makes that possible. The guy's really out of his mind. So anyway, Lou Dobbs was fired by Fox. Fox doesn't want the liability of, you know, what's going to come with this guy. They don't know what the hell's coming out of his mouth on a daily basis now. There was a new lawsuit from a new election company. It wasn't even Dominion. It was one of the other ones, Smartmatic or something. And they're suing for over $2 billion. So Fox is like, you're telling me it's like, tank the company or get rid of Lou Dobbs? Buy Lou. So anyway, um, now CNN is going to get in on the fun here because, of course, they hate Fox and, you know, just giant, like, cultural differences, too, between the different networks. And so Brian Stelter is going to dance on the grave of Lou Dobbs, and um, he gives commentary again here. This is, like, the second week in a row where one of his main, one of the main focuses of the show is, like, I love it when people I disagree with get fired. I love censorship without calling it censorship. Now, again, I got zero sympathy for Lou Dobbs, and, and these right-wing charlatans are liars and frauds. And be clear on that. Um, but the criticism coming from CNN rubs me the wrong way. So let's watch, and then we'll talk about it. Let's begin by going behind the scenes of Fox's surprise ouster of Lou Dobbs. It's not cancel culture here. It is consequence culture. What are the consequences for riling up people with reckless lies about a democracy that most Americans cherish? Well, lately there have not been many consequences, but maybe that's changing. Maybe. The pro-Trump love-in, the lie fest known as Lou Dobbs tonight was canceled on Friday one day after Dobbs was singled out in a $2.7 billion lawsuit from the voting tech company Smartmatic. The company alleges that Fox and Dobbs and Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani all waged a disinformation campaign against the company in a desperate bid to keep Trump in power. There are other lawsuits coming too. Uh, and we're gonna get to those in a little bit uh, with a spokesman for another company that was smeared by the likes of Dobbs. But here's the thing. Yeah, Dobbs is off the air, but Janine Pirro was named in the Smartmatic lawsuit, too. So was Maria Bartiromo. And as you can see, they were both on the air, back on the air, this weekend. Fox is vowing to fight the Smartmatic lawsuit. And I'm told that the plan to cut Dobbs loose was in the works before Smartmatic filed in court. So then why was Dobbs dismissed? Why isn't Fox explaining it? 
What does this tell us about Fox's direction in the post-Trump age? What pressure is Fox feeling from networks like Newsmax? And how significant could all these lawsuits potentially be? So the line that I think is egregious is, it's not cancel culture, it's consequence culture. Now, listen, in this particular case, fair enough. Because he's, these people just are not doing their job. They're hired to do a job. Job being news and commentary, yes, from a conservative perspective. Granted. But if you're actually committing defamation, <laughs> libel, slander, on a regular basis, and you're, your company you work for is about to be put out of business as a result of how reckless you are, then, yeah, like, there are consequences to your actions. So, I, I'm not, I actually don't disagree in terms of this particular case. However, however, these guys never, ever, ever apply the same standards to their own networks. Ever. So, now, am I saying it's a full equivalence? No. Fox is not the same as CNN. Newsmax and One America News Network are not the same as Fox. There are degrees and there are gradations as to how bad the various outlets are. But what I will say is this. If you're going to be principled and if you're going to have a standard, all of the networks fail miserably. They're all beyond the pale. Some can be more beyond the pale than others, but they're all beyond the pale. So here's, here's the problem with what Brian Stelter is saying. Were there any consequences at all for Russiagate? And how MSNBC and CNN, for a year, probably more than a year, were provably, verifiably, demonstrably wrong on virtually every point and every claim they were making. There were a thousand times of big breaking news, and it just turned out to be total lies. And it was fraudulent. Like, the, like Paul Manafort meeting with Julian Assange. There was, there's a thousand stories that turned out to be completely untrue. To be misinformation or disinformation. Some people are dupes, I'm sure. Other people are nefarious liars. The intelligence agencies leaking certain stories, I'm sure that they're lying when they do it. Some of the people who work at the networks, maybe they think it's real, but they were wrong. Are there any consequences? Lou Dobbs might think that what he's saying about the election is real, but he's wrong. So, if there are consequences for Lou Dobbs, why should there not be consequences for Rachel Maddow, who covered Russia more than any other topic? Why shouldn't there be consequences for Jonathan Chait or others who said that, well, maybe Trump has been a Russian asset since the 1980s? One of the predominant theories was that Trump is a Manchurian candidate and he's going to be dragged out of the Oval Office in handcuffs. And that he was going to be brought down by Mueller. That didn't happen. The people who went down around Trump, they went down for non-Russia-related reasons. Now, good that they went down. I don't like them. They're corrupt. They're goons. But mainstream media was wrong every step of the way. There have been no consequences for that. And I haven't heard a Brian Stelter rant that we need consequence. It's not cancel culture. It's consequence culture if Rachel Maddow got fired, for example. Because she doesn't do her job right. She doesn't do her job well. She's wrong. Lou Dobbs doesn't do his job right. Doesn't do his job well. He's wrong. It's okay for... On the Lou Dobbs front, you get it. Yeah, he's got to go. What are you going to do? It's got to be consequences. But you said nothing about Rachel Maddow. You said nothing about, for example, the Jake Tapper segment where he went out there and lied about Medicare for All and said it doesn't save money and totally misconstrued the numbers. Because even conservative estimates say, oh, it'll save $2 trillion. There was a study from the University of Massachusetts Amherst which said over a decade it saves $5 trillion. He went out there and said, no, it doesn't save money. He did a segment on it. I remember it went on YouTube. It had like a 90% dislike rate. You want to know why? Because he's full of shit and it's dead wrong. Were there consequences for that? For lying about something that makes up a giant chunk of the economy for a policy that, if implemented, would save 45,000 to 60,000 lives every single year? Were there consequences for that? This is a life and death topic, and he's actively doing propaganda on the wrong side of it, which will lead to more people dying if we keep our system the way it is now. 
It's not cancel culture, it's consequence culture. Sorry, you were demonstrably wrong about one of the most important issues, literally the most important issue to the American people. It's the number one issue in most polls, healthcare. Jake Tapper was dead wrong about that. Now, you could either say he's terrible at his job and he's insanely sloppy and he thinks he's right but he's dead wrong, or he's a nefarious liar. Either way, do I get to say it's not, it's not cancel culture, it's consequence culture if they fire him. He didn't say that about Jake Tapper. Weird. He didn't say anything about the fact that now some of the biggest Iraq war proponents are lionized and treated as heroes on all these networks. They have Bill Crystal on, David Frum. These are the anti-Trump Republicans who they think are part of the resistance and are great people. You haven't said a goddamn word about Bill Crystal. Maybe it's not cancel culture, it's consequence culture. Not only should he not be a commentator for these networks, he should be in the fucking Hague. He should be locked up. He committed crimes. He's a war criminal. See, the, the consequence culture only cuts in one direction. And it's in the direction of the conservative networks. I got no love for the conservative networks. They're horrendous in every imaginable way. But if you're going to make these arguments, you for fuck sure better have a standard and apply it fairly. And he's not. Because then he'd say Jay Tapper has to go for his Medicare for All stuff. Every Iraq war supporter has to go. The ones who crafted the Iraq war, especially, not only do they have to get fired, their commentary is useless. They're dead wrong about everything, but they should be in prison. What about all the people who were wrong when it comes to Syria? They were dead wrong when it came to Syria. You had Brian Williams talking about the beauty of our weapons. Ch at various outlets cheering it on. What about that? Listen, you guys say, oh my god, social media, they need to crack down on the misinformation and the harassment and the abuse. You know what's the clearest case of abuse I could ever think of? Cheerleading a bombing campaign based on lies, which is what you guys did on all the major networks, every single one of them. But for some reason, that doesn't count to Brian, it doesn't count to Brian Stelter, because we're the good guys. I've defined us as the good guys, so therefore anything we do is justified. Because I've already said we're the good guys up front. So if I lie about Medicare for All, if I cheerlead a bombing campaign based on lies, if I act like war criminals are important political commentators, there's no, there should be no consequences to that. Weird. So for Lou Dobbs, consequences. For me and my friends, no consequences. These, they didn't even cover the 2016 leaks about... the WikiLeaks about the Democratic primary and how it was basically... Rigged against Bernie. Why? Because they didn't like Bernie, and they supported Hillary. So, they're also- they're lying by commission, and they're lying by omission. Why are there no consequences for that? Shouldn't there be consequences for that? You're not doing your job. This is an amazing story. It's a huge story, and you buried it. Listen. The bottom line is, we should as much as possible lean on the side of free speech. Okay? And- and I mean that. So, I mean, all the networks, even with people who are saying things that I despise and I think are grotesque. It is what it is, man. This is the, the price of freedom. There's going to be people you love and people you hate who are talking, and they have the right to talk, the ability to talk, and they have a platform. So, I lean heavily in that direction. But if you want to have the conversation about who should be fired and who should keep their job, and you want to have that conversation in the realm of, listen, it's just about can you do your job right? There's got to be consequences. I'm willing to have that conversation, but Brian Stelter is not going to like where that conversation goes. Because the reality is, all these motherfuckers are terrible at their job. Every last one of them. And if you actually had some principles and some standards, and you applied them objectively, basically 80% of the people who work at all these networks are gone. Gone for different reasons, and gone for, you know, there are varying degrees of egregiousness. And varying degrees of, like, who's a liar and who's a dupe. But... 80% of them would be gone, and Brian Stelter would be among the gone ones. So, maybe stop cheerleading censorship and deplatforming and firing and whatnot, because, for the love of God, have some introspection. I mean, it, the, you're so... he's so blind to his own failures and his own network and his buddies. It's honestly pathetic. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's every week now, him going out there talking about how it's wonderful when people he disagrees with, uh, you know, get kicked to the curb. Okay, Brian, but careful. Careful. Because, um, you don't make the cut. <laughs> with any, any fair standards, you would not make the cut. 
And that's a fact. 